Okay, this morning I want to get into the Word, and uh, unfortunately I'm going to deal with something today that I really, I'm not, I don't enjoy doing this. Okay, and I will deal with it because sometimes we have to, but I'll tell you why I don't want to deal with this. Because what happens so often is we get sidetracked. We get sidetracked on what God is calling us to do right now, and we get sidetracked into something that I really believe is just the stunt of the devil to get us off our focus. Okay, but I'm going to deal with it today because there have been just so many people that are now starting to fall into fear or get gripped by this thing. So I want to try and deal with this thing in 10 minutes, and I don't want to make this a long issue, but I want to give you the truth so that when we finish here today, you are able to sit down and have peace in your heart and to get back on track. And unfortunately, as leaders, that's often what we need to do. There are times when things go a little bit off track. We just need to bring it back on track so that we stay focused. And so today I want to deal with this issue of the mark of the beast. All right, this issue of this chip that everybody's going around and they're saying they are panicking and they're saying, is this the mark? Um, you know, it's going to be on your right hand and your forehead. And where, where are we going with this? Do we take it? Don't we take it? What is going on? Well, let's deal with this thing properly now so that we don't have to deal with it again. Because I don't want us to fall into conspiracy theories and I don't want us to go off track on what the Word says. Now, I want to start by laying a foundation. The Bible speaks about the mark, okay, on the forehead and on the right hand. Now, why are those two significant? Why is the devil after those two? Why is the Antichrist using those particular symbols? Why didn't he choose the left hand? Well, let me tell you why. And I want us to understand this because this is going to help us just to calm down and know where we are in the Lord. All right. Firstly, Satan only copies. He cannot create. He doesn't have um, a, cap a capacity or an ability to create. He will only copy. And so whatever God does, he copies. Let me give you an example. God has prophecy. Satan will come with fortune telling. Okay, and so it carries on. He just copies. So let's go and see what the significance was of the mark, the right hand and on the forehead. What is that all about? Well, let's go back to Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. I'm going to give quite a bit of scripture, so just write them down. You go look at it yourself or go back to this video and get it there, okay? Exodus 13, 9. It shall be a sign to you on your hand as a memorial between your eyes. Okay, so the right hand and the, and the between your eyes, that the Lord's law may be in your mouth. Okay, for with the strong hand, the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. This is part of the ritual uh, or the ceremony of the Passover feast. So he says, on your right hand, I want you to know that the Lord has brought you out with a strong hand. The strength of God's might is a symbol of the right hand. Uh, why be on the forehead? That... God's commands are kept right before my eyes. And so the forehead is there so that you see it right before your eyes. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 16, it says, It shall be a sign on your hand and on your frontlets between your eyes, for by strength the, Lord, the hand of the Lord has brought us out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 6, verse 8, it says, And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as the frontlets between your eyes. Deuteronomy 11.18 Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be the frontlets between your eyes. Can you see, it was a symbol that God was using right through Scripture to say, listen, the right hand and the forehead was a symbol of God's strength, power, and might that is going to release you all right by the power of his hand and also that his commandments stay in front of your eyes that your focus stays on him so you must know that the devil is going to use that as a counterfeit he's going to copy that and that's what this mark of the beast is about but before i get to some detail about it remember that most gentiles won't even know what this is about most gentiles even what i've told you today you are not even aware of you see, because this is not actually geared at the Gentiles. This is geared towards the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation understands that. 
when we start talking about the mark of the beast and some of the things in, in Revelation, we are talking about the Jewish nation being affected. Because the church of Jesus Christ is already gone. We are not here when this happens. Okay, so I'm going to just deal with some scripture to show you what you need to be looking out for. So that you can just know that everything that's running around now, Bill Gates is not the Antichrist, okay? And he's not doing any of these things right now. That is not the mark. So I just want to just clear that out straight away. All right, the Antichrist has to reveal himself in the temple. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, I want you to read this. It says, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. <coughs> now, what does that mean, the falling away? Well, let me explain. It's when the church of Jesus Christ has been taken out. When the church of Jesus Christ, remember, the church, one person with prayer has all angels busy restraining and pushing back. When the church is gone, when the Holy Spirit has been removed, all hell is going to break loose. Why? Because there's nobody to restrain anything. And so that's where the great falling away speaks of. That where the world is just going to go mad. If you think it's gone mad now, take the Holy Spirit off this planet and then you will know what mad is. Okay? But there is a falling away first. And the man of sin is revealed. Alright? The son of perdition. That is the Antichrist. He comes after the church has gone. Right? But I want you to see verse 4. And who opposes and exalts himself above all and is called God, or that is worship, so that he sits as God, and this is the important phrase, in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So first step that you need to know is that nobody is the Antichrist until he's revealed in the temple. So if you as a Christian want to have a, have a yardstick or a light or a radar out there, wait for the third temple to be built. Okay? Wait for the third temple to be built. He, the temple has to be built. He has to reveal himself. And then he imposes the mark. Okay? He has to present the mark, but as the Antichrist. Now, why is it going to be significant? Because when he comes and he says, this mark has to go on your forehead, on your right hand, the Jews will immediately know that that's what God was talking about. That that is what this, this, the connection will be immediate because they understand the Passover feast. And so it's not about the Gentile church. We are all going to be gone. We are not going to be around. This is about the Jewish nation. And so it says that once he's in the temple, he will then reveal himself. And then I want you to go to Revelation 13 that everybody quotes. And uh, Revelation 13 verse 16 states the following. It says this. He causes all great, small, rich and poor, free and slave to receive the mark on their right hand and on their foreheads. Now the Antichrist is forcing the mark on the people. It is not somebody who just comes and says, okay, well, I've got a new technology or a chip or something, and now, now it's the Antichrist. No, this is not that at all. Because the Jewish nation is not going to just fall for that. Wait until the entire Jewish nation falls for it. The Bible says that they are all going to fall for it because he stands in the temple. And nothing is going to happen with regarding the mark until the temple is built. So all you need to do as a Christian is wait for that third temple. All right? It is not being built yet. They are ready to move on it. Okay, there are signs coming that it's going to happen soon. And we know that when that happens, the Christians better get ready and we can deal with that when we get there. But this is not that season. This is the season where you need to keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? So I want us to get away you see, from this idea and get this fear out of our heart that the mark of the beast, first of all, is going to come in our time. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not going to be here. So take that off the table. And I will teach on that at a later stage. But right now, our focus needs to be in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot sit down and be panicking about the mark or some chip that somebody's got an idea. And by the way, that has been rejected for most of the nations anyway. 
The other thing that, that also concerns me is this 5G thing, that everybody's now bombarding me with this 5G. And let me ask you a simple question. How can 5G create the virus where most of Africa don't even have 5G? But yet the virus is here. Okay, so we need to be careful, folks. We need to get our focus back on track. What is, what is the focus? The Lord Jesus Christ. We need to get our faith and trust in God, believing God on His Word, trusting Him for our economy, believing God that when we speak, angels are released, that things start moving. But sometimes I need to come and assist and just to correct the doctrine, okay, so that we can just make sure that we are not in a panic state. I don't want fear to grip our hearts right now. We need to be prepared to fight for our nation. And this is what Satan does. He comes with all these sideline things to try and take us away from our real focus. I want to tell you now, if the church of Jesus Christ can pray properly, if the church of Jesus Christ can declare properly, we are going to see miracles that we have never seen before. Okay? So what I want is this, is I want us... To make a decision in our heart that we are not going to run off with every whim right now. We're not going to run off what the media throws at us. Because Satan will use any platform, any plan, any distraction to get the saints off praying. That's one of the reasons why the church of Jesus Christ is not seeing the power that we should be seeing. That's why the level of healings is less than what you saw in the Bible. Because the church is not praying. And so we need to activate this and we need to get ourselves aligned and we need to start doing what God has called you to do. Okay? And that is to get the word, release the word, and start fighting with the word. And we're going to teach you how to do this. But I am just trusting that you understand the Bible says you'll know the truth, the truth is going to set you free. So from now on, no more panic, no more fear. Get that out of your life, knowing. That this is still coming. And even when it does come, you are not here. Okay? You are not here. You as a bride have left. Because there has to be a major falling away. There can't be a falling away as long as the church is praying. And so right now, we need to believe God. We need to align ourselves. We need to stick to what God's saying. And we need to fight for our economy in Jesus' name. Okay? So I want us to take our elements today. <clears throat> and as we take the elements, I want you to really just say, God, I thank you that you love me so much. All right. Thank you that you died for me, that you're protecting me, that you're guiding me, and that my focus is on Jesus Christ. And that I am going to pray and stand in the gap in Jesus' name. I want to speak to every person who is retired. You do not understand the power that you've got at your disposal just by praying. If you just sat down and said, my job is just to pray one hour for our nation every day, break it up even. I'm telling you now, God is going to move like you can't believe. That's one of the blessings that, that retired folk have got is time. All right, while the others are busy helping develop the economy and actually working and, and on the job busy with things retired folk you are you can be the pillar and the backbone i want to tell you right now there have been many many believers who have kept the things at bay in our nation i can tell you many times where things were planned to devastate our nation and it just never happened why because the church has been praying but not on the level that we need to change the economy and to change the continent. So right now, I want us to take communion. And as we take communion, I want you to get your focus back. And say, Jesus, I love you. I worship you. I thank you for the price that was paid. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to just lead me and direct me. So that I can be ready to sit down and be part of changing this nation. In Jesus' name. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said that this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he said, drink. This is my blood. Take in remembrance of me. We are remembering what Jesus Christ has done. And the dunamis power that has been released because of the price that Jesus had paid. And so today, 
I want us just to come before God and say, God, help us keep our focus on your word. Help us keep our focus on releasing your word because your word carries the power in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you that as we come before you this morning, Lord, I ask you please to forgive us of anything that we have done wrong, any wrong thought, any wrong action, Lord, any wrong word. We ask you please to forgive us right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you wash us clean as snow. And Lord, right now, I thank you for the price that was paid. I thank you for your body that was broken for us. Lord, for our physical and emotional healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the blood that was shed for our salvation, provision, protection. But Lord, right now, I thank you, most of all, that we can love you this morning. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. Please make yourself more real to us. And Lord, I pray right now that as we go about our daily business, Lord, that we will constantly keep our eyes focused on you. And Lord, I thank you that we will not be distracted by the plans that the devil has for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, we just pray for physical healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release your dunamis power over us in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now that the dunamis power of God flow in our physical bodies. I come against every single symptom. I command it to go in Jesus' name. I release the power of God over us. I thank you, Lord, for total healing, total restoration. And Lord, I thank you that the power of God will be made manifest in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we just thank you right now for our leaders. We pray for our leaders in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for President Ramaphosa and for the cabinet and our municipal leaders. Lord, anybody who is over us, we pray for them right now. Father, we pray your anointing. We pray your blessing. We thank you, Lord, that your word says that you've got the king's heart in your hand. You will turn him in the direction that he needs to go. Lord, I thank you that every decision that is made is made with godly wisdom. Lord, that the unction of the Holy Spirit is involved in everything in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now for our economy. I thank you, Lord, that as we go out as believers, we are the light and we are the salt in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that when we go into our workplaces, that we will bring the power of God and we will establish the altars that are needed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the word that goes out with power and with might. I thank you, Lord, that we can pray scripture over every situation. And as we do, angels are being released by the power of God. Lord, I thank you right now that you are moving by your spirit in our economy. Lord, that every sector will have a supernatural intervention. Lord, I pray for the hospitality industry and for the beauty section. Lord, I pray for a supernatural intervention there in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to move in a supernatural way. And God, you are going to make a way for that industry in Jesus' name, those industries and those sectors. Lord, I thank you for a supernatural intervention. And Lord, any other um, sector that is closed and still closed, Father, we pray right now that your hand will be over them. And Lord, supernatural provision will be in their hands. But Lord, the sectors that are open, we thank you that the power of God is released and the blessing of God is starting to come. Contracts, divine contracts, supernatural deals in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for this. Amen. Amen. I want you to get your declaration ready and we are going to declare what God has over us as believers. And I want you to speak this out in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won which I, have not, which I do not have to fight. All because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life. Lord, I thank you right now 
that supernaturally we will release the blessing wherever we go. And we thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.